Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop once again, and George and I are here with our special guest, Mark Rowe. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Welcome to the show. If you've got a question for Mark, and there's going to be tons of them, I'm sure, put it in the chat room. I know Jeff Holman is sitting back there somewhere with a quill and pen and some probably some sheepskin writing down the questions so, and relaying to them to us. We're also on Clubhouse tonight. For those of you who are venturing way into the future, as long as it lasts you know, until my mother starts using it, and uh, and you'll be able to ask your questions on there as well. We're Wait, is your mother's name actually Kelly? Because no, she's no, watching not, right now. You know my mother's name. Anyway, we'll be right back with Mark Rowe and all sorts of fun stuff. It's time for Voiceover Body Shop. Right all right, guys. Now. All right. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive. From their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. Okay. Got that down fine. Well, I'm not in our, our 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 magnificent studio facility here anymore. Uh, You're just in the regular. I'm studio just, this facility. is this is where I work. This is you know this is the regular desks thing, and uh, it feels so real. It does. I mean, the and green must... screen technology is good, but I mean, this is just amazing. Yeah, you know, because I get to show off my radios and and all this stuff. My 1942, you know, Zenith uh, console. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! This isn't green screen. This is not green screen. No, this is this is this real. Is my actual. Hey, good timing on it. I think Sue hit the tap, tap button right on time. That was good. No, it's for real. It really is the studio. It's kind of fun. This is a POV we never get to see on the show. So I know. I I actually kind of like it. It wasn't working tonight. (laughs) Well, 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 maybe we'll just stick with this. It's a lot easier this way. It's fun for now. Why not? Yeah, we we are celebrating 10 years over the next two weeks of doing voiceover body shop and, and its prior incarnation as East West Audio Body Shop. Uh, back when I was in Buffalo and George was in Santa Monica and I was shoveling snow and he was, you know, shoveling sifting sand. sand. Yeah. Uh, but we're here in Southern California now and uh, enjoying it a lot. And we're going to talk a little bit about it uh, on Tech Talk about some of the things that we've learned. And, uh, but and again, you've been here you, five and a half years now, Dan? Five and a half years. July of 2015. I can't Impressive. believe. Yeah, it's almost six years we've been here. And uh you know, and if anybody wants some fruit, we're going to have a lot this fall. <laughs> once we get to have a party again, we can have a fruit picking party at your house. Oh, we're definitely going to have a party once everybody can get back together. For sure. Anyway, but we're going to have a bit of a party tonight because we got one of our favorite people on, uh, you know, and it, here's the thing. As owner of the legendary Mark Rao voiceover studios of Burbank, California landmark for over 35 years, Mark has worked with Hollywood's elite voice talent for over four decades. As a voice actor, you can hear him as one of the iconic pirate voices on Disneyland's Pirates of the Caribbean ride. 
and seen and heard by millions daily on Alaska State Troopers, one of my favorite programs. Promos for Shark Week and DC's Legends of Tomorrow, Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon, parodies for Jimmy Kimmel Live in real time with Bill Maher, and hundreds of cartoons and video games. Welcome once again to our fabulous VOBS stage virtually. Mark Rao. Hi, Mark. I had no idea that I was actually working. Thank you for that, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. How are you guys doing? We're doing great, and it's great to have you back. Um, I, I'm thrilled, absolutely. In fact, last time, I think it was actually with you guys at the, at the studio at your place. Well, actually, we were at your studio. If that's, you remember. Oh, that's, that's true. <laughs> now we won't talk about. Yeah, no, that one, that one didn't quite work the way we want. So we owed you one, and now here's your chance. Perfect. It only, uh, it only took eight years, but that's good. No. <laughs> I'm almost as long as the history of broadcasting. Anyway, uh, you know, and the thing about it is, is you've, you've done everything. I mean, I just went through a list of the things that you've done, and I'm sure that's just the Reader's Digest version of all the things that you've done. What's the most favorite thing you've ever done in voiceover? Um, well, as a, as a voice talent, the Pirates, the ride was fun. I mean, it hit... During the session, it was made very clear that, you know, that was the last ride that Walt was hands on with. And you guys are going to be the voices for the next few years. So that that was fun. And now being at that age where you want to leave kind of a legacy, that's kind of a fun thing. Um, but, you know, honestly, a, a lot of the, the video game projects, there's been some very, very special things with even kids that, you know, don't get out much or having issues or medical issues or whatever and, and are, are love characters or whatever. So there's something very special about that connection. Um, and, I, you know, when again, I mean, we sit in a room and talk and don't sometimes realize just how much impact that it has on people. So mm -hmm. that's kind of cool. What were the characters you did in that? Um, well, I, it's Lord Stratosphere and we can't, I mean, I, I, a ton of them. I mean, all the Warcrafts, so it just kind of depends on whatever, whatever it may be, whether if it's dead or mutated, I'm usually there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Is that on your business card? Yeah, because <laughs> really? yeah, it should be. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be seeing that on his website tomorrow, I'm sure. When did you start the, the legendary Mark Rowe studio? Well, um, uh, I originally started in East Hollywood in a terrible, terrible uh, right off of um, Hillhurst when ABC was still over there. And I had this wonderful Yugoslavian landlord who would come out and yell at me about everything and threaten to sue me. Um, he said, what are you talking? I can't tell Mark, you'll catch it in my yard. You know, it's like, well, but thank you. It's, and he would be threatened to sue me again. So anyway, it was there and then moved out of there to a, a little building, a commercial building on, uh, on the corner of Hollywood Boulevard in Gramercy Place between the freeway and Western, which is a pretty nasty. It's like, oh, look, that's not your elbow, is it, sir? Okay. <laughs> it was a, it was in a, kind of a scary place. And then doubled in size there, tripled in size. And then when it made the move to Burbank, it seemed at the time, like, good Lord, it's like forever. It's like way out there. Um, not realizing, of course, eventually everybody, you know, that's kind of a, a hotbed now. But at the time, it seemed like, well, going out of the hill and, and the city of Los Angeles charged an extraordinary amount of gross receipt sales tax, which was really absurd for a studio. What a studio grosses and what it nets are kind of two different planes of existence. So anyway, made the move out there and have been there. Um, actually, a little history on the building. Um, when I first moved into the building, there was a, a wonderful company called Stereo Vision. And Stereo Vision is the company that made all those crappy old uh, 3D gorilla movies, all the oh, all that kind of. Mm -hmm. So when I first went in, it was a warehouse, and the guy was just very well uh, here. You know, oh, and they've got rocket ships on strings and things all over the place. And it's like, well, this would be kind of fun. And so that's that's the building. And basically now it's rather large and knock on wood, even even through COVID, we're staying relatively busy with a lot did of localization you, stuff. Did you get to keep any of the props that were left? No, exactly. I wish I wish I would have that. And they had tons of uh 16 millimeter, all of the, all of the loads of stuff. And it was like, well, it would have been great to have some of that, you know, just kind of just yeah. Yeah. localizations. Can you explain real fast? Cause you, I stepped on you there, but explain what the localizations are. Um, localization, you'll notice that everybody is scrambling for content right now. And so, especially like with Netflix, um, they'll green light anything. You'll notice there's some truly awful shows that probably were shelved forever. And now they brought it. I think we were talking earlier. We did a uh, Tom Sawyer, um, you know, Huckleberry Finn, except they had shot it in Hungary. So, <laughs> so all of the kids thought of the ancient joy sport in the cave and thought it was kind of an interest. So we had to go back and redub. Same thing as, as far as video games. 
you'll take a large game that was done in it could be anywhere from Israel to China to Korea to the and then we'll dub it into English. Um, and that's become a huge market. Same thing with Netflix. Um, and all of those really is just they they want stuff dubbed into English rather than subtitled. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's kind of a neat. Yeah, I know my son's actually was is working on a on a on a show right now. Mm -hmm. they, they they needed somebody who was slightly autistic and sounded that way and one audition and he gets a job and i'm just like looking at. well that's it. great good i yeah. mean you know that's an interesting it's it's a there's a you know it's basically dubbing doing adr you know for that kind of stuff and it's interesting you have to kind of change things on the fly realizing that the script is not necessarily going to fit so of course you kind of make that up as you go and see but yeah it's it's kind of an interesting thing to do sure yeah, not, and now they do it like this this karaoke t uh, style thing, which works really well. As opposed to uh -huh. like, beep beep beep, go. It's like, yeah, go. well, yeah, that you got vocal cue and all the all kind. Of, yeah, there's a whole bunch of different with you know the banners going across the bottom to time you in and all. Yeah, it, and it works really, really. well. The amazing thing is too with with a system like Pro Tools, you can nudge things and scoot it over here in time compression. You can get lip lip. It's called lip flap when you get that actual mouth, and it's like right on. You very rarely. Of course, unless you have a client who doesn't want to spend the money, then it's not right on. It's like, so where are we going now? So, <laughs> and things aren't in quite as in sync as they should be. As long as he's happy with it. <laughs> How right. in sync do you want it? Yeah, that's when the price goes up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, if you've got a question for Mark Rao, and as we continue in our discussion, I'm sure it's going to bring up lots of questions for you. Throw them in the chat room. Or if you happen to be joining us on Clubhouse, uh, let Danny know that uh, you, you have a question. Raise your hand, and uh, we will get to that in uh, in just a little bit. Um, let's talk about the different genres available out there. I mean, we were just talking about ADR and, mm -hmm. and, and dubbing and stuff like that. With, with so many different genres out there to perform, and, and you do a lot of coaching, how does somebody find their niche? It's really, you know, I, I think coaching dramatically helps with that to find out, you know, you have a voice that's suited for a commercial and show narration, you know, there's, you know, station imaging, there's animation, there's video games. I mean, there's a litany of different things and it's really do, you know, part of that I think is, is ultimately where you see yourself. What would you like to be doing? And then kind of using that as a stepping stone to work toward, um, you know, there are some people that are more suited for commercial what commercial works, bread and butter work. If you want multiple agents across the country, chances are you're going to see a lot more return for your investment doing commercial work because that seems to be the majority of what they get. Um, but that's not to say there's an awful lot of video game stuff right now. The video game industry with, with COVID back in March did over a billion dollars in a month. I mean, it was like, it's, it's like, wow, there's no movie that's ever come close to that as far as movie industry. Right. So again, it's a very captive audience. And anytime there's something like this where you have a lot of people at home, voiceover, the, the business has gone right through the roof. It's extraordinarily busy. And I can't tell, I've talked to a number of people who say this is probably one of, financially anyways, one of the best years they've had because it's just so busy as long, which is an interesting point, as long as you are set up at home and, and able to handle that which requires a little bit more than sometimes in a USB mic. And it, uh, they really are looking for kind of specific stuff. Yeah. And we, and we see George and I have seen so much of that this year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of people who are, you know, they were like, I was talent. I would just go into people's studios. Well, we've only been telling you for like 10 years or more that you really need to have a home studio. And when sure. the, the rubber hit the road. And now that's, and we're ready. that's hugely, hugely, hugely popular now. I mean, that's that they're asking for. It's no longer just good enough for an audition. They want to be able to use those files for whatever, you know, whatever the project may be. Right. So you'll see video game companies requesting large diaphragm mic in 87 or a Neumann TLM 103 or something, you know. So it's just it just it's kind of being it doesn't mean that you need to necessarily go spend, you know, eight thousand dollars on a mic. A 103 is not that expensive, but it's being prepared for whatever they if they say this is what they want. You want to go? Well, sure. No problem. I can right. do that. Yeah. Worst, a yeah. Find a studio or, or rent a mic if you need to. Yeah. As a studio owner, though, because I've always been curious about this, although you are, you know, you're you're one of us, along with being a studio owner. Mm -hmm. um, does the fact that everybody is going to have to have a home studio going to affect your business at all? I mean, um, you know, I think some somewhat. Sure. You know, but but at the same point, you still need 
a place to, it, it, with Source Connect, you still need a place to lock up to that's going to do the mix on the spot or that's right. going to lock at the picture that's going to do all of that. So thankfully, that portion of it still stays pretty busy. Yeah. Uh, once again, we're talking with Mark Rao about anything he wants, only it's going to be all the things I want to talk about. Uh, let's talk about demos mm -hmm. because demos are, you know, everybody got to get a demo. Have to de Why are demos so important? Well, it's like a headshot for an actor or actress. That's what's going to represent you. It's it's the same situation even with audition. I mean, an agent doesn't know you. And the thing is, too, is that that's very much like a relationship. They are taking a chance on you that you are as good as what you are saying you are. And you're taking a chance on them that they're going to get you auditions. Um, so it's that, that demo is really representative. And I know people, I, I understand that it's expensive and I understand people, you know, oh, well, I've, you know, I've done really well with my homemade demo and it's like, I, that's a degree of where it's, you may have done very well. You haven't done very well in LA or New York or with major agents because they know immediately that that's what that is. Um, so again, it's, it's also, it's it's like hedging on a resume. You're not gonna. You don't ever want to lie outright. But if it makes it sound like, oh, you were the voice of Lexus for you know Southern Arizona. Wow, that's great. You know who's who's going to know whether you actually were or not. So it's it's you're presenting your voice in a number of scenarios that fit, and that's an important point. Is do stuff if it, we're talking commercial demo. Do things that you would actually book that an agent would send you on. That's one of the comments a lot where they'll people will put stuff on and an agent's going, "There's no way you did that. I would never book you for that job in a million years." Right. You know, and so it's just doing you know what what you do. Yeah. And why would some producer let that thing go out of their door too if they're you know if they're producing a demo? You know, sure, and, very true. Yeah. Uh, what makes a good demo? You know, people are always asking us, well, who, do, who should I go for a demo and where should I get this done? And, and but they don't understand what it is that really makes it stick out, because that's what you really need is, you know, some agents that's, like, oh, boom. That, that's absolutely true. The key, honestly, with a demo is you'll hear about it needs to encompass your signature sound and it needs to encompass this and it needs to encompass that. No, it needs to be listenable. You need to hit play and go, holy, come here and listen to this. My God, this is amazing. That can be comedy. It can be drama. It can be, you know, it, it, production elements. Something um, I, I use an adage. I remember writing a, a cartoon bit, um, and usually what I'll do is rewrite stuff. We'll use scripts to to hone out where we want to be, and then that's used as a template. Then we actually write rewrite stuff so that we're not stepping on any toes. And that way, it's specific to you. But like the little girl's voice, and you hear the little girl, very cute and sweet, and you know she like that and gets out of bed and the little feet tap over to the door and it opens up and good morning mr bluebird and the bluebird chirps and she goes good morning mr tree and the tree tinkles and she goes good morning mr sunshine and there's a great big thunderclap she falls completely out of character and goes hey where's my sunshine no we beep it of course but you can't help but go Meh, because it's completely not right for that character and there's your hook you're not going to shut it off at that point you kind of want to know what's going to happen next right. and that's really the art to it, it's, it's leaving pieces that are long enough to let you grab what it is the person is, is trying to accomplish and get across. And yet quickly enough that if that's not what they're looking for, you're on to something else before they can hit pause or whatever it may be, or, or rewind or just dump it all together. Right. So you want to grab that attention once you have it, hold it. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and that's, you know, one way, I mean, is it, what's a, if you're, if you're, when you're starting a demo, I mean, you've got what, like, Three to five seconds to grab somebody by the gorgle with it. Well, I think it depends entirely on what what kind of demo you're doing too. Right. You know, it's like if you're doing a video game demo, that can be very dialect heavy, but they need to be very real dialects. It's not like you know, hey, look at those lucky charms. Oh, there's a pot of gold. It's not that kind of a you know that would work fine for animation, but you know, video game they want much more realistic. Commercial, um, no, it's it's doing comedy again. We've all done that. Where you know, it's obviously this commercial. Oh, this is great. I love this spot. This is hilarious. That's what the sense you want to create with your demo. So that it, it it stands out from everything else and isn't just this mundane, yep, there it is. You know, there's the voice doing this. It's like you want to do something that's fun, you know, or or again, it can be very dramatic. You know, it's something that but something that, that the whole key to with with all voiceover is connecting emotionally with whoever that audience is. And if you're doing that then you're in. It's no different than a little girl sitting on the side of the road and she's crying. You're going to get down to her level. You make eye contact, your facial expression changes. You're like, well, are you okay? And that, and you're making that connection. 
Right. And in this case, it's even more so because you're not there to work the room anymore to go, oh, hey, this, you know, it's basically the essence of you needs to come through an MP3, hit play and go, wow. You know, and that's, there's even, there's an art even with auditions now to make stuff stand out because an MP3 is a player. They can't see most people. If you're doing two takes, you do two full takes. Right. Well, an MP3 is a player. You can't see where that second take is. And there's not a, a casting director on it. that's going to go, let me see. Is that the second one on there? Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's, it's not going to happen. It's like, so bowl me over at the top. It's an audition. You don't want to do the same thing, you know, on camera class. You want to do the same thing. The first eight people in front of you did exactly the same monologue. Be you. The only thing we all have the same copy. The difference is there's only one you. So bring the essence of you to that and really shine. Yeah. Absolutely. Once again, we're talking with Mark Rao. If you got a question, throw it in the uh, Facebook chat room. Or if you're with us on Clubhouse tonight as an experiment, you think it's going to work? George? Experiment. <laughs> I think it's going to work. Okay. Yeah, th th we've already got one queued into the uh, excellent panel, which means I know there's somebody waiting with a question. Cool. Right. Excellent. Well, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, back to demos for a second. How many demos do you need? You know, I see people with like 15 different demos and they really break it down. Well, I think as you progress, it's, you know, I have a demo that I have a demo that's all bad guys. I have a demo that's all creatures because I do a lot of that kind of stuff. So when an agent goes, hey, can you have that? There it is. It's like I'm giving them exactly what they want. The, the main reason you don't want to combine everything, I've, and I run into that a lot with, well, can't we just put like commercial and animation on the same thing? And it's like, well, if you're sending a, your demo to Cartoon Network, you don't want to, hi, Mr. Squirrel, at Century 21 Real Estate. You know, it's like, what? You know, and it's just, and you'll lose it. And that's kind of the whole reason for having specific demos is that it's giving them exactly what they want to hear and in, in the context they want to hear. So, you know, realistically, it, it depends on what you want to be doing. You know, commercial obviously is old school, very much like, oh, you have to have that. And that's where you should jump off. But if you are like a, a razzle dazzler at dialects or you have a, some really, really good cartoon characters, that might be a great place to start because you want to do something that's memorable that makes you, oh, man, that guy was wow. That's great. Now, they may ask you an age like if you're looking to get signed, they may ask, do you have a commercial demo? And at that you cross that bridge when it comes or have one in your in your you know cache of stuff to do. But. The key there is just, again, it's really doing something that's memorable and, and whatever that may be. Um, but again, you know, and be honest with yourself. And that's the other reason I think that having a coach is a good thing, coaching, because you, you knock on wood, should get genuine feedback. I mean, I've had people go, oh, I do a dead on Homer Simpson. Duh, duh. It's like, <laughs> well, that wasn't exactly dead on and Dan is not going anywhere. So why? You know, it's like, so do, you know, make the character yours. You know, voice matching, that's great. To, you know, you can have a little section someplace that's that or a separate little piece of that. Same thing with um, combining, you know, English and Spanish. Keep those separate. If they're casting for an English spot, Spanish is like, what the hell is this? Why is it? And vice versa. You know, so you just want to give them exactly what it is that they want to hear. And that's really the purpose for having those you know, as far as the amount of them. If that, I mean, the more the merrier as far as being able to give a, a potential client or a buyer specifically what they want to hear. But, you know could be you know one demo it could be 10 yeah i've i've seen people with like 15 mm -hmm. you know i mean there's avr and french <laughs> and german and english well, I thought an adr demo was really silly because it's like I, I remember a girl doing that she's because so, so, i did a, a dead on clarice starling it was like whoa how do we know that's you and not Clarice. I mean, you know, Jody Potter. It's like, okay, we'll just take your word for it. I mean, it's, it just it seems like kind of a moot point. I have yeah. a demo that's commercials, but only while running at full speed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Steve Barton joke. No, George Carlin joke. That's yeah, probably. Your I can't say the real joke, but. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, in order to get an agent, hmm? is everybody, we have a lot of people trying to get in the business like, I got to get an agent. Well, perhaps if you had some work first, it might help. But is is the demo first thing an agent's going to look for? Or is an agent going to come looking for you because you're making money? That's well, the money is that that's the biggest thing. You realize that they're only 10 percent human. Um, and that, I know there's money in there somewhere. That, <laughs> that, 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 that really. Yeah, that's that's again, they're looking at what are you going to bring in the shop? They're keeping their doors open with 10 percent of what the people they book are making. 
So they want to make sure that you're not just going to be sitting there, that you're actually going to be making them money and, and doing something. But, you know, cross that bridge to when it comes, people assume, oh, I'm going to, I've had people that, you know, brand new. So like I'm making my own demo. And so like, um, so what kind of mic is best, like a USB? And it's like, well, why don't you get a little training first and figure out the best avenue to go, you know, to which, what's your best approach for this? And, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of, of pay to plays. I think they're, they're wonderful from a standpoint of really honing your licks as far as auditioning, editing, setting up a timeline for yourself. So, you know, at three o'clock every afternoon, I'm going to do this. I will do X amount of auditions. I can edit these very clean, edit in, edit out and turn out a nice MP3. That's, you know, not, not like we were talking about it, but really low bit rate, which is silliness um, and sounds terrible. So that, you know, it's nice, it's clean. From that standpoint, as far as booking stuff, I know there are people that make, you know, amazing claims. It's the same thing with explainer videos. Well, you know, I, I mean, I, I've been making 300,000 a year off, off explainer videos. And it's like, well, I have certain parts, appendages that are <laughs> 20 inches. Sorry. Um, so it's it's just, I mean, the, the idea of that, obviously, that, I mean, there's a lot of that kind of fodder on the Internet and a lot of claims and a lot of stuff. razor blade handy just for that, you know. <laughs> yes. Oh, good. For the oh, 20 I'm, inches? I, I, <laughs> no, to make I the mean, edit you know. <laughs> <laughs> really? But, <laughs> oh, I love you guys. Anyway, um, so it, it's really, to me, it's just, it's it's doing what you do, the agent portion will come, but again, and there are agents that will take you. Don't set your eyes necessarily on LA and New York, right? Jumping out of it. Because again, if you don't have a track record, their chances are they're kind of remiss to want to bring you on, you know, because the bottom line is, you know, how much money are we going to make? So it's not the days of the old, you know, swab drugstore. Hey, Candy, you're going to do great. I come with me. This is going to be great. I'm going to make a star out of you. That's not going to happen. You know, yeah. so but you know, get a, a couple of things under your belt. Sure. You know, we do the same thing at the studio. We bring in usually people that you're familiar with and, and there's a way to market yourself to agent and keep that power going. So it's, you know, people have a tendency to go, you know, I got three demos and they send them all at once with a cover letter and go, okay, I haven't heard anything. It's like, well, no, do it. it get, come up with a nice place to do this then feed them this, then feed them this. Now you have a legitimate reason to contact the person. Right. You know? Yeah. So, we, we've got, one of the other things you do is you you do you do coach because coaching is a very important part of making demos. Mm -hmm. You you have a lot of classes and stuff like that, and there are so many choices out there. Mm -hmm. And I know in our vast audience out there, they're like, "Who do I who do I coach with?" You know, and sure. and, and what's a good way to determine what's the best the best way to go for you? I mean, because you've got one on one working with some coaches, but some have classes and workshops. I mean, I, I guess it really depends on, you know, how you learn best, but how, well, how do you go about finding a good coach? All the other coaches are communist. Oh, well, there we go. It's not. <laughs> um, no, it, it, you know, vet, you know, go online, look and see. I think it's it, having somebody coach you that is in the business that works doesn't hurt. I think, you know, if they've been in the business and know what the, the how this works and, and the process of an agent, et cetera, there's an awful lot of people that hang their shingle that make a lot of claims. And it's like looking to see if those claims are true. You know, it's, yeah. it's uh, I mean, because I've heard all kinds of things from a number of, of people that, that I know. For a, it's like really they're they're teaching. Wow, that's interesting. I mean, it's and I know that they haven't actually even actually done a paid gig, per se. You know, and it doesn't and it doesn't mean it's all about doing a pay, but at least you learn like the difference, like with me, is obviously with a studio. I mean, you look you deal with directors, you deal with producers, you deal with writers, you understand how that the whole process works and what they're expecting on that end. And then same thing with agents. I mean, to deal with every agent in town. So it's kind of a different skew on things as far as what they're looking for. Um, you know, how to handle yourself, what you should send, all of that kind of stuff. And even though that's changed because we're doing so much stuff at home, you still need to have that, that, you know, essence of, of, you know, yeah, I know exactly what's going on here. I will give you what you want. Basically when you have a session, even at home, you want the client going, man, this, this is so far, but much better than what we were expecting. And it's like, great. And you're in. And then they, that's now is going to be a return client. And that's the way to do it. I, I find a lot of coaches that I, that I've, I've seen tend to try and recreate people in their own image as opposed to trying to find what is unique about somebody. Right. 
And, and, and I guess trying to find a coach that will do that, that's going to teach you as opposed to, well, I think here are my methods. And, you know, and I mean. think, you know, for, for me, honestly, like you're right. I've been doing this for a really long time. I've been very successful doing it. It's paid for, oh, let's see, I have two divorces, three houses, put three kids through college. So I'm, I'm a ha- so at this point, I'm a happy camper. So I, 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 to me, it's much more exciting to see somebody else's success and get that email going, oh man, I, you know, I got my first animated feature. I just picked, I got my first big video game. I signed with this agent. It's like, yeah, that's, I love that. I mean, that's, that's great. And that to me is a lot more exciting, even than, you know, like booking a session because now it's like, you know, I, you know that, I mean, if, when you've done it, anything for, I, it's been 47, almost 48 years that I've been doing it in LA you know, in the voiceover business, which has changed, right? But I mean, so the idea, you know, when it's, you know, calls and goes, hey, you booked the session. It's like, okay, where is it? You know, kind of, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Monica, you know? <laughs> just, so it just, it just, you know, it's, it, again, it's much more exciting to see that new blood and somebody else and see the excitement that, that they're experiencing when they're going through this and getting a job and stuff. I think that's great. That's, yeah. that's, really, it's like paying it forward a little bit. All right. Uh, we're talking with Mark Ra. We're going to take a quick break right now. We're going to get to a pile of questions from our vast audience all across the fruited plain and across God's green earth and all the other places. There may be a few planets involved, too, but we'll find out in our next half hour. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here on Voice Over Body Shop with Mark Ra. Don't go away. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, Okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the VoiceOver Body Shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. Hi, here I am in my normal workspace with a question. What's the biggest challenge you have with VoiceOver? What's been the puzzle you need to solve? The question you need answered. Well, David H. Lawrence the 17th and the coaching team at VRHeroes.com want to know. They're creating new courses and training, and they want to know what you need most. And it's easy to let them know. Just drop an email to david at VOHeroes.com. That's david at V-O-H-E-R-O-E-S dot com. And let him know what you'd like to know. Is it tech-oriented? Is it auditioning? Is it about booking more work? Finding an agent, podcasting, audiobooks, performance questions, whatever it is that keeps you up at night, that makes you scratch your head, or what you've always wanted to know about success in VO. Email David and ask. The email address again is david at voheroes.com. Let's face it. If you're a voice talent, not everyone in your family or close friends really understands what you need for your home voiceover studio. You want a what? Well, voiceoveressentials.com has the perfect answer when it comes to birthdays and other gift-giving for us voiceover folk. New, for the first time ever, after countless requests, voiceoveressentials.com is thrilled to offer the Voiceover Essentials gift card. You pick the amount you want to give, and they take care of the rest. The recipient will receive an email with their digital gift card and gift code to use on anything they offer on voiceoveressentials.com. Give them or give yourself the gift of getting exactly what you want, like the Harlan Hogan VO1A microphone, the Portabooth Pro or Plus, Harlan Hogan Signature Series voiceover optimized headphones. A lot of what? Go to voiceoveressentials.com and click on Shop and Gift Cards and choose the amount. Gift cards now at voiceoveressentials.com. Thanks, Harlan. Hi, this is Bill Armour, and you are watching VoiceOver Body Shop. It's great. 
And we're back with Mark Rao. Professional show business. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it's interesting, too. It, was, it, it made me think also that, you know, one size definitely does not fit all. So when it comes to you, know, you need to make sure that it's specifically tailored to you, both coaching and demo, just so it makes sense to you and what fits and works for you may not fit and work for somebody else. Absolutely. All right, George, you get to ask some of the questions so far that have been submitted by our vast audience. Well, just because it's novel and we haven't used it before, let's come right out of the gate Oh God! with a question from Clubhouse. So Danny, our Clubhouse host tonight, Danny, who's, who's up at bat? We got Chris Rossetti from San Francisco. Chris, you're up, bud. Thank you so much, and I uh, appreciate the opportunity. Mark, good to hear you and learn from you. And everybody. So my question is this. I'm a 64-year-old community college freshman. Is it too late for me to get into voiceover work? And what would you advise me as opposed to a younger person? Or is the advice the same? Thank you. Listen to your mother and get your contractor's <laughs> license. <laughs> um, Go to law school. You know what? Yeah. Honestly, I'll, I'll tell you what. what's very interesting is the age thing, strangely enough, it works to your benefit now because the aging of America. And as the baby boomers get older, they're wanting voices that that identify with that much, much more so. So, no, I, I think, honestly, man, there's there's room for for everyone. It's not just a young person's game. There's certain genres that are, you know, a lot of anime is is younger, that kind of stuff. But, you know, commercially, narratively uh, and, and quite honestly, even video games, a lot of no, it's it's. There's a, it's a wide open field, honestly. So I don't think age really is going to enter the picture, not to mention they can't see you because if they did, I'd be in a lot of trouble. So it's, uh, <laughs> serious. It's, so it, yeah, it's, it's great. That's a good question. But honestly, I, I think you, uh, age really, this is one of the rare fields you can work basically till you draw. I remember doing a session, believe it or not, with Dawes Butler, one of the last Jetson sessions and, Dawes was well into his 80s, and they all had, and this is terrible, with oxygen tanks, and they'd go, hi, this is Elroy, and he'd be doing this kind of stuff, and then he'd go, oh, okay, cut. <sighs> um, <laughs> it's, it's terrible, but, you know, and they, he was right up until the, the very end. I mean, still working loads. Yeah, June, June Ferre was on our show how many years ago, Dan? Sure. And, uh, it was she like was our, our third anniversary or second? Or I believe she I was 93. Three, sure, something like that, something sure, like that. And she was great too. She was a lot of fun. Oh, she, what a gracious woman! Yeah, she was wonderful. Well, uh, I guess I'll throw now to a text question. This top one in the list is from Brian Hale. He says, "Hi guys, just started watching VOBS and I'm loving the show. And a question for you: For those who are new to the business, just starting to make connections, how can you tell when someone's blowing smoke your way? What are those warning signs?" Uh, they should be aware of. So as an actor, what are the don'ts? Don't, stuff you shouldn't do, like making your own demo. Well, <laughs> usually you feel kind of funny back there and you realize it's probably smoke. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, sorry. It's a callback. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's, um, well, there's a couple of things. Obviously, if it's a callback and it's a rented house in Encino, don't go. Um, it's probably not what you're going to think it's going to be. Um, it, um Seriously, you know, I, I think with the Internet, it's very easy to, to vet people and really see what's out there and ask a couple of people, man, jump, jump online. If you see somebody, you know, giving somebody straight, hey, man, I'm just curious. What about so and so? Have you heard about this? Have you worked with this person? You know, do they um, did they do what you were expecting them to do? Are they ridiculously expensive? Was it cheap? Did they, you know, were they really pushing a demo? You know, because there's a lot of people that's kind of a mill thing, like it's four classes and then a demo kind of thing. And it's like, I, I don't think you can do that really. You just, you, you know, once again, one size doesn't fit all. So, you know, I think just vet whoever you're with and comfort level for you. Make sure that you're comfortable with whatever person you're with and whatever their style is. Absolutely. Why don't we take another clubhouse question since that seemed to work so well. Last it did time. work well. Danny, who do we have up at bat uh, in the clubhouse? All right. Calling in from Florida. We got Scott Chambers. Scott. Hey, Scott. Hey, Scott. Hey, guys. How's it going this evening? Mark, thanks Great. for taking the time out of your day to uh, do VOBS. Um, so I've got a question, and it's not necessarily for me as much as it is, is for other people in the industry. We were talking on Clubhouse the other night, and this topic came up regarding demo production. 
Mm -hmm. um, why do you think it is that a lot of demo producers do not publish their rates for demos on their website? Um, that's a good question. I, cause I do. <laughs> it's, you can go in there and look, it's pretty much what it is. Um, you know, I, th I think if they don't, you should ask them right up front. And there's a couple of things, too, that that should include. And that is how many revisions do you get? You know, with, when I do a demo, I will send it to you and it's finished. And it, however, it's like if you want to change the order or if you want to reread something to me, that's all included in that. So usually what it is, it boils down to about an additional hour to make changes if you want, rereads, that kind of stuff, even though stuff is played back to you. But the bottom line is, is you feeling and don't don't feel awkward about, you know, asking, well, wait a minute, man, I, I wasn't happy. Can we redo this? If you, know, you had somebody come over and fix your washer and dryer and they didn't do it, you'd be on the phone pretty quick going, hey, what's going on here? So don't feel, I've heard people, you know, the horror show of people, well, I talked to, so he said, oh, you know, that I'd be ruined, that I'd never work in this industry. And it's like, well, I, I don't know a lot of those people. It's like, seriously, it's, if somebody is seeing that, then I think that they are indeed blowing colored smoke. Um, you know, it's like, so as far as somebody seeing that, oh, you'll never work in this business because you question my, you know, my mix or whatever. It's like, well, that's a little tacky. You know, it's, it's very much a collaborative work. You're, you're relying on a good producer to do what they do, but at the same time, it's your demo. So you need to be, you know, don't feel pushed like, you know, kind of really like it, but that third piece, I don't, whatever, you know, whatever that is, make sure you ultimately are happy with it. And, and, you know, a producer will try and guide you in the right direction and go, hey, you know, this is really good. This is a great spot to open with. But again, ultimately that decision really rests with you. You know, you're, you're the one paying the tab. Man. Absolutely. And one quick follow-up to that. Uh, part of the other question is uh, in a clubhouse room, a new, someone that was very new to voiceover that has not really taken training from anyone, uh, contacted the demo producer and certainly was not you. Um, but they were quoted a rate of about thirty four hundred dollars and, and did not have training. And so that brought Damn, up I wish it was me. Why are, oh, <laughs> <laughs> why, why are prices uh, continuing to rise? I understand we all have to make a living, of course. But why, why is it that demo prices continue to be um, higher, say, in the U.S. than they are in other places? You know, I, I think that depends a lot on I mean, I, I'll be on, I mean, I, I've charged seventeen hundred dollars for a demo for for ages. And I think that that's realistic. It's the amount of time that's been. So I know there's people that charge twenty five hundred, that charge thirty five hundred, that charge to. And I think there comes a point where it's like, well, you know, unless this includes driving me to the audition, holding the copy for me, and doing something else for me while I'm reading the copy. Sorry, um, you know, it's that, <laughs> that seems like a pretty extreme amount of money, and so. I, you know, just, just that, and listen to some stuff. I mean, if their stuff is that good, I, you, if you listen to mine, there's demos all over the place. You can check out and see, see what's out there. And I'm, I'm not hiding, you know, it's like, listen to them, you know, and ask, you know, they should, if they're charging that kind of money, they should certainly have some samples to check out. You would hope. Yeah. You would think so. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks right. so much, Mark. I appreciate it. Sure, man. Absolutely. All right. Question Thanks. from Lonnie Manella, George. Mm -hmm. uh, I love Mark, and I've known him for years, says Lonnie. Is that true? And Lonnie, I just got the check you sent. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I know, he's, I know he seldom has to audition for anything, but here's a question I'd love to take on, and that is, what, if any, what, if any, processing do you add to your auditions? Um, honestly, I don't think you should add really put any on there at all. If you, uh, anytime that you have a backup, like in other words, you're recording stuff and they want, they will always ask for no compression flat, uh, which means you really got to be watching your mic pre to back stuff off and, uh, always err on the side of less because less you can fix and you can increase volume. If it's over modulated, you're shit out of luck. Um, it's, you know, even though there's a couple of programs that say they'll fix it, they don't, they yeah, can't, they don't, no. um, if you're doing promo stuff, sometimes a little compression to, to, bolster that a bit but honestly that's really up to the up to the client and if you're turning in auditions or like in that case with video games usually they ask pretty specifically not not to do that you know not not to put any any kind of compression on it no gating anything like that just you know no eq just make sure it's it's pretty straightforward 
you know, the whole the whole reason for that obviously is because after the fact that you can manipulate it and make it sound however you want. Whereas if that's not the sound you're looking for and you're stuck with that, then it's and I've heard some stuff that's pretty, you know, people that aren't familiar say, Well, yeah, I rolled off and it's like, Well, <laughs> yes, no, it sounds like you're on a phone. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, it's like exactly. that's what they're looking for. Yeah. I mean, we, I'm George and I tell people this all the time. You know, don't over process your stuff. I tend to think that a lot of the specs we see that say no announcers is because people are way over compressing their stuff. Sure. And, and introducing uh, just so in, incidentally on the side you note know, to their lawn email is also a, a phenomenal uh, video game director. Really very, very, very good. So I just thought I would get that plug in there. She, started- she, she also mentioned that at least one game company requests submitting levels at around minus 12 db but i don't really see this as the norm i guess the bottom line is you have to do what they want you know i've seen that i've seen but you know uh, minus 18 i think as long as you're not pinning it you know right up there just back it off a little bit and just have it nice nice and clean just that's that's really what they're, i mean i've had companies that have asked for they want to hear like you know i have a whisper room here at home and they want to see if you have a, so run um you know 48k 24 bit and talk quietly then yell then do this then run 30 seconds of nothing and just kind of and they can kind of test the the waters to make sure that it's exactly what what they want it to be and you know you come as close to it but i, I don't think you know, minus 12, minus, most people, if you're tracking, I don't think you're going to get quite that. In. I mean, if you're in a studio and you have an engineer, then he's writing that you can do that. But I, I, as long as you're in that realm, I mean, honestly, it's like, oh, my God, did you see that? It was at minus 16, not 12. Gee, you know, it's like, I don't think. It's- <laughs> if it sounds good, it is good. It is good. You know yeah. what I mean? And uh, exactly. minus 12 dB, the problem is that half the time when they give you these numbers, they don't give you the full the full deal. They give you minus 12 dB, what, peak or RMS? Oh, I know. Very it, different it, value. You run into that and they'll, it, it's, you know, get a lot of, it's it's like when they say, you know, well, we want a, you know, an, an 87 and it's like, and you want to pay how much? Really? Right, right, right. We like, want this. We want know, that. You've got a five thousand dollar mic pre and eight thousand dollar microphone, and you, and the session's a grand. Really? Okay. You know, it's it's you know. So it's I th- I think re- in that in that case, I think they're just looking for home studio to see wh- how it sounds. Honestly, yeah. the, if it's nice and clean and, and usable. What it, it's interesting too. What a lot of companies um, I know that uh, Nickelodeon is doing this. They're booking, I'm working with a couple of you that are on TV series, and they're actually sending them out a rig so that it, for continuity's sake. Now it's interesting. I'm no, I'm, and I'm not sure how that works with somebody who's not tech savvy, who's not sure how they're setting that up or their recording space. I don't know how well even even though you've got equipment continuity, I don't know what that's doing sound wise, but I, that's what they're doing. Yeah, well, I mean, at least one of my clients, you know, she's using it in her space because she already has a space that's properly set up. But they went with a kit that had a, a believe it or not, a, a USB mic that's digitally controlled so that the engineers are remote controlling everything. Is they're that right? rolling, yeah. They're, yeah. they're setting the gain remotely. They're doing everything remotely. So it's it's clever. It's very clever. Interesting. Yeah. All right, let's go, let's go back to Clubhouse because this is like you know ten years going ten years back, George. Because I know we started our very first episode taking live questions on the show. It turned out to be so cumbersome that we stopped doing it. But now, thanks to Clubhouse, <laughs> maybe we has caught up with it. Maybe Actually, we'll do some real Clubhouse where they had a can with a string and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Danny, who do we have at bat? All right, from Brooklyn, New York, Adam G. You're up, Adam. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, George. Hey, everybody there. And hey, Danny, it's really great to, uh, to finally get to speak with you. Uh, I really appreciate it. I'm new to Clubhouse, so it's really awesome to, uh, to network and, and find out so much really awesome information. So I was really wondering, I'm having a little trouble um, networking with the, with the right people in terms of voiceover agents, voiceover casting directors, some I'm having real luck with. I actually uh, had an awesome call with Andrea Romano, which blew my mind. She's so mm-hmm. awesome, and she gave me some great feedback on my demo. Um, which I'm, I'm reworking. I am self-produced, uh, so I know that's a little bit, a uh, little bit of a gray area there. But I did get some really uh, good thumbs up from nice. Chuck Duran, who gave it a listen. Uh, he gave it a listen over there. Where we've been chatting, we're friends now. Uh, you know, email 
during all this Corona time. So, but what I was really wondering, I'm sending it out. I'm, I'm sending it to the agents. I'm reworking the demo according to Andrea Romano's, you know, I trust her as a good source, but um, in terms of casting and agents and things like that, I'm in Brooklyn. I have the home studio set up, sending it out to people in LA, um, you know, with your guys' experience, uh, you know, it's hard to even really get a response sometimes. Of course, they're incredibly busy, but will they give that a listen? Will they appreciate that I'm reaching out to them? I'm thinking about L.A. next year, possibly, because I know so much of the voiceover work that I want to do is, is out there, animation and video games. Um, I know some of it is here. I can I'm trying to work with, you know, trying to get into Titmouse and, and the casting directors there. But that's really what I was wondering is if you guys had any other tips. Um, you know, I'm represented for film and uh, TV and that kind of stuff, but the what, occasional uh, voice. What what kind of home? What, what kind of home studio do you have? What are you what are you running at home? So it is it is it is a nice padded out closet, but it's fully. Uh, it, it got some. You know, I gave the uh, uh, gave it to Chuck. I let him hear the room tone. Uh, he said it was really good. I'm using a, uh, a Tech Zone audio uh, condenser, Vintage Two, uh, which he also recommended uh, through an iMac through uh, through Logic, which is all. Uh, which is all soundproofed. Right yeah, that's fine. There. That's fine. The ADD, ADD converters are pretty similar. So that's, yeah, that's, that's good. The, the, the thing is with, you know, um, do you have source connect or any connectivity at all? IPTDL? Anything? I do. I source connect. Yep. Source connect. Yeah. Nice. Source connect. Pro. So, you, you know, you, you should be, you know, flying with that. Basically it's just, it's the proper, have you done um, any, any projects at all at this point, paid or unpaid? Yeah, a couple. So uh, another one that I was uh, speaking with, I, I booked a project with Jay Mortalero, who, who did Breath of the Wild, uh, which was amazing. Um, so we've been chatting and I've been, you know, auditioning for him every now and then. Um, mm -hmm. Got booked for a small little role, um, you know, in a, in a project. Hopefully that'll be coming out soon. Can't really talk too much about it, of course. But uh, just, you know, a couple of things, um, but really just trying to, you know, just break in there and get get in more uh, as much more as possible. momentum just having a hard time getting my foot more. yeah the real the real thing man to, agent wise is to just really talk up the voiceover portion as far as what you've been doing studio wise they don't overly care i mean you can say broadcast quality that's great you know but most most uh, they it, let them reach right. out to you and ask if there's a specific like oh well, do you have a 103 because most gamers want that way whatever it may be right. uh, but <laughs> right. but you know, um, really just really talk up, you know, don't don't, you know, oh, I've studied with so and so or I'm new to the business and done hoping to make or I'm going to make a move to L.A. and want to da da No, man, you want to talk like you're you're booking now and that that's what's going to peak interest, you know, above above and beyond anything. It's like the fact that, oh, you're a working pro, meaning that somebody else has already taken a chance on you and, right, they, you know, right. and you're doing well. And that's that's really above and beyond everything that's the biggest thing of all is like oh he's working you know he's a working pro obviously there's stuff going on and that that's great and that's really the best possible thing you can do you just want to make sure to know you know never as far as listening yeah even though they'll say you know you know we don't accept you know um you know unsolicited blah, 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 etc they don't of course they're always going to listen to a demo i probably know you could be the next frank welker i mean you know so they're going to you know check and see yeah. You know, so it's just it's really, you know, and, and like I said, man, if the, if the demo is flying and, and you're having and you've gotten great feedback and stuff. Yeah, man. Go with it. All righty. Cool. Cool, we got cool, time. That's cool. really yeah. great to hear. Yeah. It's just, Thanks. Uh, Adam. Sorry. Yeah. It's just kind of getting it out there. Really doing the numbers. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate that. Thanks for taking this on. Sure. Our right. pleasure. Thanks for joining us. This one's from the text room because we got a lot more left. Let me see if we can squeeze in a couple more real quick. Um, this one's from Jim McNicholas, and he says, Mark, you run a huge studio. Do you have advice for us as at home running our little one-man show studios? Sure. Um, you know, abs it's it's like there really doesn't it, – it, well, I guess size does matter in some ways, <laughs> but um, no, it's just, you know, I've been, I've been lying about the size of my studio for years. No, it's uh, – honestly, I, I think it's it, it really – it's giving them a really good product. I'm assuming again that you have, you know, a, a nice setup that's really clean, that sounds great. The other thing too is sometimes, man, check, you know, levels, do things like send an MP3 to somebody and have them check it for you. Because a lot of the time people go, Oh yeah, I've got this and, and I'll get stuff. And it's like, you know, or you're used to seeing a waveform in an MP3 and it's like, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's like barely audible, you know? And it's like, if, so if that's stacked up, 
to other auditions, they kind of go, oh, yeah, okay, great. Next. So you want that, you know, right, right in your face sounding, you know, right up there and right on par with, there used to be a thing that nobody utilizes anymore, but it used to be called Red Book is George, you probably know with CDs and that's every CDs. All CDs were all the same level. You know, and so just, you know, make sure that your, your levels are up there and, you know, do, do, you know, do the kind of work that you enjoy doing. You know, there's all kinds of tricks. The more you do it, the better you get, you know, that kind of stuff. But yeah, man, realize, you know, even with that, I mean, I started out at the same place. I started with a studio in the house and it did, strangely enough, you know, I'm back to my studio in the house, full of circles. <laughs> it's, it's amazing how that works. <laughs> All right, why don't we take one more Clubhouse question while we have the opportunity here. We got well, there ready. happens to just be one more person, I think, in the queue over there that looks to be Jamie. Is that right, Danny? That's right. Jamie Hale, go for it. It helps if I turn up the fader. I, I don't know why I just did that. I pulled the fader down the second you, you threw it at Jamie. Sorry, Jamie. Hey, we start Jamie, over. on the air. Go that for was it. really subtle, George. So <laughs> subtle. Well, Jamie's here. No, hi guys. I'm Jamie, and I'm starting out. I finally have my my home based everything set up. I've taken classes, and I actually started doing a lot of commercial work. Um, nice. So I have that demo going on and working on that. However, I don't I don't necessarily know what um, program I should use to record it with. What do you recommend? Keep it simple. Well, it's honestly whatever whatever works for you. I mean, obviously the you know the, the Audacity is out there, which again is is you know a freebie, and it's I mean it can it can work okay. It's really, but I mean a lot of people swear by Twisted Wave or Reaper, or I've used Pro Tools everywhere because I've had it forever, both in the studio and here at the house. And so it's really kind of whatever, you know, whatever works for you. Pretty much now A to D converters, analog to digital are, are pretty similar. I mean, unless you have dog ears and they're going, well, that's, not, I can tell that's definitely not, you know, it's like, you know, I, I think just for the auspices of voice, human voice, I think you'll be fine. It's really whatever you feel comfortable using. Well, that's awesome. And we, we, we basically ran out of time, but I want to make sure I do say that this from our, from our chat room moderator, Jeff Holman, he says, I want to thank Mark Grau. He did my VO commercial demo. I just got a real VO agent because of it. You rule Mark. So Jeff says, cool. yeah. It checks in the mail, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeff just actually booked a movie, too. Oh, that's yeah, great. We're really excited about that. Yeah, awesome. Finally, getting, a, getting his break. That's great. Look at that. Yeah. That's awesome. That's very cool. Yeah. So, Mark, a pleasure to see you. Eventually, we'll all be able to see each other face to face one of these. Days. I sure hope so. Absolutely. I, I'll buy you both a beer or something wonderful. I guess we got to do something here. Absolutely, and it's closer than farther now than. I'm certainly. That. I'm. I'm keeping fingers crossed that people, like we were talking about earlier, that people don't get stupid and just kind of stay the course because we're, we're there is light at the end of the tunnel. I hope. You know. That's right. Yep. All right. Well, Mark, thanks for being with us, and we Absolutely. will see you soon. This was a pleasure, man. Thank you so much for having me. This is great. You guys are the best. All righty. All right. We'll be right back to wrap things up right after this message. Thanks, Mark. This message is something like that. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Well, it's the time of the show where I get to riff and make up some real cool story about our amazing 
sponsors Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect. Uh, it is a tool that is just ubiquitous now when it comes to running a voiceover studio from home. When you want to have a professional, personal studio, you have to have Source Connect. I mean, that's pretty much straightforward. It really is now taken over the momentum that used to be held by ISDN, that sort of tool that was used by all the big jobs, all the big names, and all the big television networks. ISDN's gone. It's really gone. It really is gone. Source Connect is what's stepped in its place. Now, there are a lot of other tools out there. I mean, there's tons of stuff that run on Chrome. And you may along the way be asked to use some other system other than Source Connect because, again, there are many. But by, by and large, when you get to big auditions, they're going to say, do you have Source Connect? Or don't audition unless you have Source Connect. So at this point, if you don't have it, you're probably not interested in working on those kind of jobs. You're probably just doing kind of the lower budget work. And you really want to step it up if you're ready. If you feel your studio is ready, if you feel your quality is consistent, and you're ready to do real-time jobs where you're being recorded real-time, any time of the day, if you're ready, you need to get Source Connect. If you want to find out if you're ready, you should definitely get a sound check from Dan and I and see where you're at with all that whole, that whole thing. And if you need help getting it set up, I also have a whole Source Connect set up at georgethe.tech sc. Anyway, thanks, Source Elements. Let's go back and wrap up the show. We really appreciate your support. See you in a minute. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're listening to Voice Over Body Shop, VOBS.TV. Yeah, it's always great having Mark on. He's he, he always manages to fill an hour without too much effort. And it's just straight shooting, too. I know. Absolutely. You know, he says it like it is. He makes some jokes. You wince once in a while, and that's all part of the fun. <laughs> Strap it absolutely. in. That's right. That's right. Um, well, we got Tech Talk coming up next. If you're uh, still with us live, especially on on, uh, on on Clubhouse or if you're watching us on Facebook, so stay tuned. We'd love your questions for that. Uh, next week on this very show, we will be having Tech Talk number 53, where mm-hmm. it's going to be uh, talking a little bit about our 10 years on, in uh, doing the show and uh, and some of the stuff we've learned. Uh, then on April 5th, we're taking a week off for Passover. You know, the wife won't let me do it. It's Passover. It's the second night of Passover. You can't do it that night. Hey, I get more days off thanks to having <laughs> having all those holidays. <laughs> not so bad. Not so bad. It's been it's been a very busy few months. I don't yeah. mind. Yeah. And then on April fifth, I'm really looking forward to uh, meeting Kevin Gershan, a uh, friend of yours, George, who's a oh, yeah. producer. He knows the biz inside out backwards. Television inside. producer. Yeah. Does a lot of shows on CBS. That's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, who are our donors this week? Looks like in green written here, I have Noreen Reardon, Eddie Faria. We write his name in all caps because he's the king of all caps. Uh, Graham Spicer, Michelle Blanker, Christopher Epperson, and Sarah Borges. Thank you so much, everyone that have donated just maybe a little bit here and there, a one-time thing or a subscription using PayPal. You can even send a buck and we'll keep reading your names. Yeah, really. Talk about cheap, (laughs) cheap promotion there. All right. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors as well. Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Oh, we also had VoiceOver Extra supporting us tonight. Yep. Source Elements, makers of Source Connect. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. All right. Our thanks to Jeff Holman in the uh, chat room tonight and uh, on and, you know, Facebook and our chat room and Danny Burnside for helping us out so far in uh, Clubhouse. It seems to be working like to see that it didn't work yeah and of course our amazing technical director sue merlino making it happen tonight and uh and of course lee penny for being lee penny well that's going to do it for us on this stay tuned for tech talk as we record that one uh but we'd love your answers or your questions and you'll love our answers uh stay tuned for that i'm dan leonard and i'm george whittem and this is voiceover body shop or vo b s